where does sound wave goes when we speak when we speak sound waves travels through air as a form of mechanical energy here is a simplified explanation of process vocal cord vibration when we speak our vocal cords in the larynx vibrate as air from our lungs passes through them these vibrations create sound waves sound wave propagation sound waves generated by the vocal cord travel outwards in all directions as longitudinal waves these waves consist of alternating compressions regions of higher air pressure and rare fractions regions of low air pressure air medium the sound wave travels through air which acts as a medium for the propagation the air particles themselves do not move significantly instead they oscillate back and forth in the direction that the sound wave is traveling reflection absorption and transmission when the sound wave encounters different objects and surfaces they can be reflected absorbed or transmitted for example when sound waves hit a wall they can bounce off it reflection be absorbed by the tail or pass through it transmission listeners ear when sound wave reaches person's ear they enter the ear canal and cause the eardrum to vibrate these vibrations are then transmitted and to the series of small bones in the middle ear and eventually converting to electrical signals by hair cells in the inner ear main interpretation the electrical signals generated by the cochlea are transmitted to the brain via the auditory nerve the brain processes these signals and interprets them as the sound we perceive it allows us to understand speech and other auditory information in summary when we speak sound waves travel through the air and interact with various objects and surfaces eventually reaching the ears of listeners where they are transformed into electrical signals to the brain interprets as speech or other sounds where is sound wave stored when we speak our sound waves are not stored when we speak instead they are generated and propagated through the surrounding medium in the air in real time when you speak your vocal cord vibrate and create sound wave that travel outwards in all direction this sound wave carries information in the form of your speech such as pitch volume timbre of your voice as well as specific words and sound they are producing once sound waves are produced and travel through the air they continue need to propagate until they encounter an object or surface these sound waves can be reflected absorbed or transmitted by various materials and structures for example if you speak in a room the sound waves can bounce off walls be absorbed by furniture and other objects and then dissipate due to interaction with the environment unlike digital data that can be stored in air and retrieved sound waves are a form of energy that travels through a medium they don't persist as physical entity that can be stored in a specific location instead they are able to medium and very low loss energy as they interact with their surroundings when a solid object absorbs sound waves what is the change in these objects now when a solid object object absorbs sound waves several changes can occur in the object vibrations Sound waves can be energy and when they are absorbed by the solid object, the energy of sound waves can, be, can cause the particles of the object to vibrate. These vibrations can lead to transfer of energy within the material. Temperature increase. The absorption of sound waves can result in slight increase in temperature of the object. This is because the energy carried by the sound waves is converted into thermal energy as the particle of the object vibrate. Mechanical stress. Depending on the intensity of absorbed sound waves, the vibrations within the object could potentially lead to a mechanical stress or strain. If the sound waves are strong enough, they could affect the structural integrity of the object over time. Resonance. Some objects might resonate when exposed to specific frequency of sound waves. 
Isn't it so close when the natural frequency of the object matches the frequency of the incoming sound waves? This can lead to enhanced vibrations and potential even structural change within the object. Sound damping. Certain materials are designed to absorb sound waves effectively. They, these materials are used for soundproofing and causing frequently the various applications such as building and construction. Internal friction. The absorption of the sound waves can all cause internal friction within the material which dissipates the energy uh, of the sound waves as heat. This is another way in which the energy of the sound waves is transformed within the object. It is important to note that the specific change within an object when it absorbs sound waves can vary depending on factors such as the properties, the frequency and intensity of sound based on the duration of exposure. In many cases, the changes are subtle and may not be readily absorbed, stable, especially for the everyday material and sound levels. Sound waves absorbed by the object heats up can be that this heat energy back to sound. The process of converting the lab sound energy back into sound is not straightforward and generally really not practical. When sound is absorbed by the object and converted into heat energy, the energy is distributed around the particles of the objects, increasing their kinetic energy. And consequently, raising the temperature of the object, this heat energy is typically dissipated in the surrounding over time. Reversing the process and converting the heat energy back into sound will really require a significant amount of control and precision and it would likely involve a complex energy intensive process while it is theoretically possible to convert heat back into sound by using specialized device or technique. It is not a common or practical method. In practical terms, the conversion of absorbed sound energy back into sound is not a realistic approach for most situations. It is more feasible to focus on minimizing sound absorbing by using materials that are less contrasted sound for the That is why we feel the design for sound working and application of engineer and minimal sound production and maximum sound reflection by composition. Overall, as the conversion of absorbed heat, absorbed sound energy back into sound is practically possible. It is not a practical or commonly employed method due to complexity and challenge involved. Can we hear sound of Alexander the Great by an, any technique which can reproduce sound stored anywhere in the universe? As common knowledge, there is no known technique or technology that can produce or recreates historical sounds, including the sound of Persian indigenous Alexander the Great from any point in the universe. Sound is a mechanical wave that requires a medium such as air, water, solid materials for its propagation. Therefore, it cannot travel to the vacuum or space where there is no medium to carry the sound waves. Additionally, even if we were to hypothetically find a way to capture and store historical sound waves, there would be still be significant challenge in reproducing this activity. The technologies and methods we try to capture, store and reproduce sound are based on our understanding of physics and the properties of sound. Historical sounds would need to be captured at the time they occur, which is not possible for events that are created or invention of sound recording technology. While there are techniques to enlarge like historical artifacts, text and records to learn about the past creation, specific sound from history, it is a challenging and currently unfeasible endeavor. It is important to note that the ability to explore the universe and learn about history is limited by the law of physics and our current technology capabilities. So, we can see that it is very difficult for us to hear what Alexander said. But, in future, definitely some technique will be evolved and we will be able to hear sound of great Alexander and other historical personalities like recreating sound existing in the universe.
Thank you.